They stood on the parade ground of Fort St. Manuel, with the darkness of pre-dawn slowly fading and an unnatural hush over the assembled men. Jack tried to ignore the sweat which had already beaded on his eyebrows and hung irritatingly on the tip of his nose. He gripped the gothic hilt of the 1845 Patton Wilkinson sword that hung at his waist and blew away a fly that hovered over his face, wishing he were anywhere but within this star-shaped fort on Manuel Island. If Jack swivelled his eyes slightly to the left, he could peer through the dark to the entrance to Marshamset Harbour and the anchorage of Slema Creek, busy with a score of vessels, their Mediterranean rigs now familiar, and their hulls sleek on the placid blue water. If he looked right and ignored the harsh limestone of the walls, he could nearly see the towers and churches of Valletta, capital of this sun-tortured island. It didn't matter in which direction he looked, just so long as he didn't face his front and see the terrible spectacle that was about to occur. All his life he had dreamed of joining the army and performing deeds of valour. He'd grown up with tales of bravery and heroism and had accepted that death and hardship were part of a soldier's life. He had seen something of the reality in the humid forests and broad rivers of Burma, and today he was about to see another military casualty. Rather than a splendid death leading a heroic charge against an enemy position, Private Scattergood of the 113th Foot was to be publicly executed, hanged by the neck until he was dead, for stabbing a sergeant in the back. Fifteen yards to his right, Major General Sir John Redding sat erect on his brown horse, seemingly unaffected by the spectacle he had ordered. The tail of the horse twitched in a vain attempt to relieve the animal of the tormenting flies. Jack tried to take his mind elsewhere, anywhere apart from standing here watching the execution of a private soldier. He drifted back to his home in England and relived again the terrible moment when he learned which regiment he was to join. He was Jack Windrush, once of Witchwood Manor in Herefordshire, now a lieutenant in the 113th, the Baby Butchers, the least considered regiment in the entire army. Even after three years, he found it hard to believe his fortunes had sunk so low. He had left his home with the ill will of his stepfamily following close behind and marched quickly to an inn. It was the work of a second to find a seat, break the simple seal and unfold the parchment. At sixteen inches by ten inches, the document was much smaller than he'd expected, and when he read the contents he felt the sick slide of despair. Skipping over the leading paragraph that stated that the Commander-in-Chief of the Army reposed special trust and confidence in his loyalty, he came to the Do by these presents constitute and appoint you, John Windrush, to take rank and post as ensign in the 113th Regiment of Foot. He had stared at the fateful number and swore quietly to himself. 113th foot? Oh, good God in heaven! The 113th foot was the regiment nobody wanted to join. There had been other regiments which bore the same number, but they had been excellent, honourable units. This latest incarnation was certainly not. Born in the civil disobedience after Waterloo, its infancy had been marred by disgrace when it quelled a riot by musket butt, boot and the bayonet, with women and children being among the victims. Since then, no commander had wanted the 113th under his command, and only the dregs of the recruits slouched into the ranks. Sick to the core, yet with no other option, Jack clutched his commission and some of the gold sovereigns his stepmother had reluctantly deposited in his bank and sailed to join the regiment in the east. Jack thought of his first and so far only campaign. He'd been present with the army at the conquest of Rangoon, where more men died through disease than from Burmese bullets, but after that the real war had started. He remembered the heat and humidity of the jungle, the whine of the mosquitoes and the sun burning off the early morning mist of the river. <laughs> 